Welcome to the Queen of Hearts podcast. And here's the queen herself, registered dietitian Heather Klug. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Queen of Hearts podcast. Hello, Heather. Hi, Bethany. Welcome Thanks. back to my house. Yes, I'm so happy to be in your dining room. It's nice to get out of my house and see people. Well, yeah, and it's nice to see you because we've been doing these remote podcast for the last few weeks so it's nice to actually be six feet apart in the same room right there you go (laughs) there you go so today bethany and i are going to talk about the important roles that water plays in our body how much water we should be drinking each day tips to increase water intake if you're not a big water drinker and even some health conditions in which limiting water is crucial i also thought this would be an important topic because it's summer and it is hot outside. Well, this here in Wisconsin (laughs) might not be everywhere around the world, but it's even more important. I think most of us know that when it's hot out that we're supposed to, you know, hydrate with water, right? Because we lose water and electrolytes when we sweat. Yeah, Mm -hmm. and this is a topic that I'm especially interested in because I'm going to be blunt here, folks. I have a bladder like an acorn. And so... It's true. I I, watched it at work. (laughs) Anybody, this is not a secret with anybody who knows me. So I'm interested in how much water we're supposed to be drinking because I would like to not be in the bathroom all the time. So I've heard a lot of different kind of variations on, you know, how much everywhere from eight eight ounce glasses to half your body weight or whatever so i'm excited to learn what you have to say about that all right we (laughs) will definitely get into that now the truth is the amount of water for each person is really kind of individualized so i'll go through that later but let's first talk about the reasons we should be drinking enough water each day now we can live for several weeks without food not that i'm recommending that right nobody wants to do that if they don't have But we really can survive for a good few weeks without food, but we really cannot go more than a few days without water. It really is very essential for our body. Mm -hmm. Now, fun fact, Bethany, when I was doing... I love fun facts. When I was doing some research on this, I learned that the percentage of water that our, our body makes up... Uh, It changes with age, and there's also a slight difference between male and female. Because, of course. Well, yeah, there usually is, right? (laughs) But when when a newborn is born, comes into the world, that newborn is about 78% water. Wow. Yes. They're very... (laughs) <laughs> Liquidy. Squishy. Squishy. <laughs> I guess, yeah. And then as they get a little older, so closer to one year of age, that drops down to about 65% Most of their of body coming water. out in their diaper. Well, yes, I can attest to that <laughs> fact. And then for women, the average is around like 55% of our okay. bodies are water, okay? Um, and then for men, it's a little bit higher. It's around 60%, and um, that's mainly because men – tend to have a little bit more muscle compared to women, right? Okay. We generally have a little bit more body fat and slightly less muscle, and there's sure. not as much water and fat, right, as uh, there is in muscle. Okay. Okay, so that's why there's a slight difference. And obviously for everybody, that's a little bit different, but those are kind of the averages. Sure. So obviously we know we need water, like you said. We can't exist for very long without it. So how exactly is it working in our bodies to keep everything up and running, as right. we'd say? Yes, because water is essential. Like you yes. said, it keeps everything, every single system you know in our body functioning well let's start with our cells we're going to go all the way down to the cellular level that's right so water is a part of every cell in our body and it actually provides shape and what they call rigidity to the cells okay inside the cells there's lots of chemical reactions going on and water is really kind of a mediator of that process you know meaning it helps turn you know like larger molecules into smaller molecules or it might help with making coenzymes or hormones, things like that, okay? Okay. And then also water is really a transporter 
with cells. Which so, makes sense. Yeah, it's going to carry oxygen and nutrients to all our different cells. And then I think other people know too, but I'll just review these. So water aids in digestion and absorption and also metabolism. It helps with waste elimination. Well, that and, one we all know. Yes, and preventing constipation. Yep. That's a big one. Water also acts as a lubricant for our joints and it's part of the joint fluid. Sure. Right? And then it cushions our different body tissues, especially our spinal cord and even our eyes. Okay. Okay. And then it flushes bacteria from the bladder. Obviously. I think every woman knows that one. Every woman does know that one, yep. Yes, because we're at higher risk for urinary tract infections. Mm -hmm. So we're taught that from a very young age to drink enough water. Water also helps regulate body temperature, keeps us in a good temperature sort of range so we don't overheat or so we're not too cold. And water then also supplies tiny amounts of these trace minerals so there when you drink water you are getting really tiny amounts of calcium magnesium copper sodium and then depending on where you live sometimes there's fluoride added Mm -hmm. to the water as well and then the last thing I'll mention is that um, water helps maintain our electrolyte balance so it's it really helps keep sodium in check So you don't have too low of amounts or too high of amounts. Which makes sense. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, water does a lot for our body, probably more than we even really consider. But I didn't hear you talk about losing weight. And I know that that's one of the things that I've heard, and I'm sure other people have heard, like, if you want to lose weight, drink way more water or, you know, drink this amount of water and it's going to help you just drop the pounds. Mm -hmm. So... How true is that? Well, there is a little truth to that. Always a little. Always a little. (laughs) Now, I cannot tell you to just go and drink a bunch of water and you're going to magically lose weight. I really (laughs) wish it was that easy. One of these days, Heather, you're going to have that one thing. (laughs) Oh, my gosh. I wish I could tell people that, right? But it does help a little. I think where it helps the most, however, is if you are somebody who drank a lot of beverages that were really high in calories. So we're talking like soda or fruit drinks, sugary coffee drinks. Right. What else could we put in there? Even juice or a lot of alcohol. And you replace those things with water, you're going to be cut so many calories that you're going to lose weight. I've seen people lose sometimes a pound a week easily, sometimes even more if they were drinking several of those kind of beverages each day. Okay. Yeah. So I do want to mention there is a little research though to support the fact that water can help with weight loss, Mm -hmm. especially when it's drank before meals. Okay. Okay, So in this one research study, and it was a small one, there were only 48 participants in it, and they did have both. So they had two groups, and both groups were told to follow a low-calorie diet, but they had one group not drink any water, like extra water, before meals, and then the other group was told they had to drink 16 ounces of water before breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Okay. And the group that drank the water before, oh, and this was a half an hour before the meal, if I didn't mention that. And so the group that drank the water, over 12 weeks they lost about 15 and a half pounds the group that didn't uh, drink the water before meals lost 11 okay so well, both I mean gr- that's yeah something I mean both groups lost weight but the group that drank the water lost a little bit more and I feel like every little bit kind of helps right and when it comes to water I'm okay with recommending drinking more water right yeah because it's for the most part harmless it's you know very inexpensive and they're really it's easy to do and there aren't any side effects to it except running to the bathroom but that could be used as extra <laughs> steps right so that there comes as steps there at least for me it would yeah that's good yeah you might make more trips to the bathroom the way I look at that is if you're drinking a lot of water it is sort of helping you flush out any extra water huh, you might no be, pun intended everybody <laughs> that you might be holding on to okay so that's another kind of benefit there all right so we talked about the importance of water for your system and for helping you um, keep your weight in check Let's talk now about how much water we should be drinking each day because sometimes I feel like it's a tall order <laughs> with what I've seen. So, okay. And that, like the eight, eight ounce glasses of water a day to me sounds like a ton. Okay. But I don't know, and I, I think we'll get into it a little bit later, like I don't know what counts mm-hmm. as far as water. Okay. 
So we will definitely get into that, but let me go through the guidelines a little bit. Okay. Now, this is sort of hotly debated, okay? Mm-hmm. I mean, you hear different things, even from different health groups out there. This is such a simple question. Do <laughs> you think there would be an easy answer to it? Um, but I'll give you an example. The uh, Institute of Medicine recommends nine cups of water a day for women and 13 Mm. cups of water a day for men. And a cup is eight ounces, eight fluid ounces. Okay. Okay, so kind of keep that in mind. If you're a pregnant woman, you need to drink even a little bit more, about 10 cups a day. And if you're breastfeeding or nursing, it's 13 cups of water a day. Wow. Yeah. (laughs) And then the National Academies of Sciences, Engineering, and Medicine recommend 11 and a half cups a day for women and more like 15 and a half cups a day for men. She's looking at my face right now because yeah. I 11 and a half cups of water a day, I would never leave the bathroom. Okay. I, I mean, uh, that's all I see. It, my eyeballs would be floating. It would just be like I would have to go all the time. Yeah. So keep in mind, all of this is individualized. So these are general recommendations. Okay. I'm going to give you a really easy tip later. But I think a good starting point, I think, for the average person is to probably try to get in close to the eight, eight ounce glasses a day. Okay. You know, it's kind of a reasonable goal. It's kind of easy to remember, right? So you could start with that. Now, if what we've kind of found too is that the more you weigh kind of the more water you need to so okay. kind of keep that in mind as well you'd have to imagine you know i'm only five one am i supposed to drink as much water as a female who's maybe a foot taller than me right right she yeah. has more surface area weighs <laughs> more more blood volume all of that right you know that taller person is probably going to require more energy than i would or more water i'm i mean yeah right? so the more you weigh kind of the more water you need and another recommendation you can look at then is to take Take your weight in pounds and divide that in half, and that's about how many ounces of water to drink. You're so going to you, make me do math. Yeah. So if you weigh <laughs> 200 pounds, you drink 100 ounces of water roughly or okay. somewhere close to that, okay? So let's get into how about the heavy exercisers. People, by this I mean people who do high-intensity kind of exercise or endurance sort of athletes. Like real endurance, like marathon runners. Yes. Like, okay. Not like people who just feel as though they're in an endurance yes athlete. there is a difference yeah yes. okay <laughs> so somebody who has their heart rate up at a really high intensity for like several hours okay. at least an hour and a half or more right yeah. 90 minutes, I believe, right? Yes, yes. So if you're working out at a really high intensity like that, you want to drink, um, in addition to your regular water intake, about 16 ounces before your workout, Ooh. four to eight ounces during, and then another 16 ounces after okay. your workout. So that's about another 36 to 40 ounces total okay. on top of the other. <laughs> that's a lot. But yes. I can under you know, if you're really working out hard. Yes. Okay. And that's different from the people who like just occasionally kind of think they're doing, you know, an intense workout. Because right. I hear this mostly from men. So I'll just put this no out offense, there. No offense, but... Yeah, no offense to men. <laughs> but, you know, if you're working out strenuously for 30, 45 minutes, you do not need to drink a bunch of Gatorade to replenish your fluids. Thank you for saying that. Yes. Because I've had to tell people that in the past. Yeah. Gatorade was designed for for college football players yes who are playing in florida in heat and humidity and yeah yeah they're sweating a lot so here's the general rule (laughs) if you're working out for more than 90 minutes at a very high intensity right and you're sweating like crazy sure you can drink something a small amount of gatorade remember you don't have to drink a huge amount of it it's probably like 8 to 12 ounces you can maybe drink too, so not the whole bottle. Yeah. <laughs> right? So just to keep that in mind. Otherwise, you're just adding a bunch of sugar into your system too. And not to pick on Gatorade, but all sports drinks that yes, are Yes, that is true because there. there's other sports <laughs> drinks out there as well. All right, so we mentioned the hot weather a little bit too. So if you live somewhere where it's really hot and humid, you probably need to drink a little more water too. So, mm-hmm. you know, you may have, may have to drink a couple extra cups of water a day or something like that and then the last thing I'll mention has to do with different health or medical conditions as well so anybody who's had a child or if you remember being really sick yeah and you have a high fever 
if you've been vomiting, if you have diarrhea, you're losing water, right? Mm-hmm. You're going to have to drink more water. And sometimes even one of those oral rehydration solutions like, like Pedialyte, Pedialyte or this is where Gatorade sometimes comes into the picture as well. Right. And then again, women, we talked about the bladder before, but if you have a bladder infection, urinary tract infection, kidney infection, if you have kidney stones, it's often recommended you drink more water with those health conditions as well. Definitely. And how can you tell, is there a way for just the general population to tell, like, I'm drinking enough water and I know what you're going to (laughs) say. It's going to get a little gross up in here, but... Yes. So (laughs) my main recommendation for everyone, and this is going to sound crude and it's going to sound a little And Heather's not crude, so... (laughs) Well, not normally, but but I want you to look at your urine, everybody, okay? <laughs> yes, look in the toilet after you pee. Stand up, turn around, look in there. Give yourself know, a hand. <laughs> yeah, I know it sounds gross, all right? So when you're well hydrated, your urine is going to be like like a, a pale, light yellow kind of color, almost like lemonade. Like lemonade. <laughs> yeah, so look for the lemonade kind of color. If you look in the toilet bowl and your urine is very dark, you're dehydrated Mm -hmm. okay you need to drink more water but if your urine is consistently clear like there's no color to it and that's going on for days and days you're drinking too much water and you need to back off a little okay so this is an interesting topic the overhydration because i think we hear about it every so often there'll be a story on the news about somebody who overhydrates and really bad things happen Mm -hmm. um but it's it's not something we hear about regularly. So can you talk a little bit about what happens to somebody when they're drinking too much water? Way too much, yeah. So this can lead to a serious medical condition called hyponatremia. It's also known as water intoxication. And this is when sodium levels are overly diluted. And that can lead to swelling in the brain and Ooh. sometimes seizures and even coma. Not good. Now, yeah, and I don't want to scare people too much right. about it's this. Again, it's thing. not like it's happening. <laughs> like, you don't even hear about it every day. People who are mostly at risk for this are people, as you can imagine, who are kind of smaller. Sure. So if you're shorter and have a small frame, children are more at risk for this. Um, sometimes even endurance athletes or anybody who drinks like a lot of water like really a lot in a short amount of time yeah okay Um, also people with kidney disease they're more at risk for this because if your kidneys aren't functioning properly right yeah then the sodium can get to be too low as well okay Um, but again the main point this is why it's individualized look at your own urine to kind of figure that out okay right Right. and I know um, I remember being in high school and I used to be a cheerleader and you know doing a game and getting really hot and then drinking a lot of water afterward really fast and I got really nauseous oh sure that and I think it's like sometimes that will even give you a clue like hey slow things down oh yeah oh yeah so basically drink water drink enough water but you know, don't, don't go, go overboard. Don't go crazy either, <laughs> yeah. right? I mean, you don't need to walk around with an empty milk gallon and like. <laughs> there drink. are some people I've seen. I that know, do that. but you don't need to be drinking like two or three <laughs> of those a day, right? So, so we yeah. also know that there's certain health conditions where people need to kind of limit their fluid intake. And you know, we work in a heart resource center, so we see a lot of people, like for example, with congestive heart failure, mm-hmm. where they need to monitor it. What other issues do people have that they might need to work on their water intake by limiting it? Yeah, congestive or chronic heart failure is um, probably the biggest kind of heart condition where people have to limit their fluid intake because their heart's just not pumping blood as well as it should be. Mm -hmm. But a few other health conditions, so we've talked about the kidneys a few times. So if you have kidney problems, especially end-stage renal disease, or if you're on dialysis, you may be told you have to limit your fluid intake. Many different kind of liver diseases too, especially cirrhosis. And then there's endocrine and adrenal gland disorders like adrenal insufficiency. And then anybody who is getting treatment with corticosteroids Mm -hmm. that's a huge one as well yeah yeah I've seen that and corticosteroids are given for a lot of different things yeah so and I've seen people really like you get 
puffy. Oh, you get like the moon face. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And those are given for a lot of autoimmune disorders or anything where they need to reduce inflammation. Right. I've mm-hmm. seen it also for like skin issues and acne and things yeah. like that yeah. too. So, yeah. Well, that's really good to know. Yeah. Let's go back to not being hydrated enough because this is where I think many people fall. You yes. know, we, we see people who come into the center all the time who don't like to drink water. We hear that a lot. <laughs> Oh, Oh, yeah. So besides, you know, looking in the bowl at our urine, (laughs) what are some other signs that you might be dehydrated that you might not be picking up on? Yeah, one of the biggest signs, and this is the one that happens to me, Mm -hmm. you might get a headache. Yeah. That's usually my first sign, like that I haven't been drinking enough water. All of a sudden, I'll get just like a headache will come from out of nowhere. Not a massive one, but it's like yeah. my head just feels a little tight or achy. And I'm like, oh, yeah, I probably didn't take enough water breaks today. So right. if you're getting headaches frequently, you might want to take a look at that. Very dry skin. That sort of makes sense. Sure, yeah. Um, if you're getting constipated a lot, it's mm-hmm. not the only reason, but right, that but... <laughs> certainly will help if you drink a little bit more water. It'll sort of help try to um, bulk up your stool a little bit more, and then it helps push things through <laughs> everybody. So it's really like a, helpful for like that. A bloom ride. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I guess if that's how you want to think of it. And then you know you might feel a little confused, or you might yes. have unclear thinking. This tends to happen in I would say much older people generally. Yeah, I was going to say I had a great aunt who would have that happen quite a bit. Mm -hmm. There might be mood changes. Um, This next one I know has happened to a couple of my family members, but overheating, Mm. especially when we went somewhere like to Florida. We're not used to that kind of weather and you don't realize how hot it is sometimes down there and you think you're drinking enough, but you're not. Yeah. You know, so making sure that uh, you're drinking enough water so you don't get overheated and then kidney stones stone formation is another big one so you might get kidney stones a lot and then the last one I will say fun fact here if you feel thirsty you're already dehydrated I've heard that before it's very true okay Mm -hmm. I'd like to say to the overheating thing there's also like desert so Mm. my own experience I went to Las Vegas when I was 17 and we were there in the winter Mm -hmm. and people said be aware of the water that you're drinking because when it's not hot, you don't necessarily think yeah. that you're losing water. But when it's dry like that, even if it's cold, mm-hmm. you yeah. are losing water. So just kind of like yeah. if you're traveling to a new climate or whatever, be yeah. aware. Well, it's very sunny there too. I not like any of helps. us are going to be going anywhere <laughs> for a while. So Yeah, so a good thing to keep in mind too, I just want to mention this. You know, you don't need to panic if you're dehydrated, right? It's something (laughs) that can, I mean, unless you're seriously dehydrated, you're going to have to go to the hospital. But for most people, if it's mild dehydration, it can be corrected really easily and quickly. You just drink a little more water, right? It's not the end of the world. Just, I mean, I have days like that too. I'm like, oh my God, I didn't do all that great today. So I drink a little bit more. And then the next day I just try to, you know, get back on track with doing that again. So besides drinking water, are there other ways to get our recommended water intake? Like, as we do here, again, I don't like water. Water is boring. Yeah. Water does not have good PR. Yes. So So another way to get in enough water is to eat enough fruits and vegetables each day. They actually usually make up about 20% of our water intake for the day because they're so high in water. Okay. So do you have, like, a top 10 that have the most water in them? Of course I do. Of course you do. (laughs) (laughs) All right, so here's my top 10 fruits and vegetables that are high in water content. These are all like 90 to 97 percent water. Okay. Cucumbers, iceberg lettuce, celery, tomatoes, romaine lettuce, zucchini, watermelon, spinach, strawberries, cantaloupe, and honeydew melon, and kale. Oh, kale's a surprise. I am, yeah. I'm also surprised that watermelon is not the one with the most water. I know. It's weird. Because it's in the name. <laughs> it's well, false advertising. Yeah, I don't think I can change the name of the cucumber at this point. <laughs> Eat more water squash. That yeah, doesn't oh, sound there great. you go. <laughs> doesn't sound appetizing. No, it does not. So what about coffee, tea, diet soda? Because here's where I have my questions. Yeah. Do they count? Because sometimes I've heard, especially with like TV doctors, mm-hmm. that they don't count. Okay. But do they count? 
Yeah, and this is one of those areas where, of course, where they've done more research and the thinking has changed on this. We used to tell people no because these beverages act as a diuretic, right? So you're going to lose more water when you drink them. But more current research is showing that this isn't the case, especially for people that drink these beverages regularly, Mm -hmm. okay? Now, I would still recommend that you get most of your water intake from actual water because there are concerns, of course, if you're drinking a lot of coffee, sometimes even a lot of tea. I would say coffee more so just because of the caffeine in there. And some people are really sensitive to coffee. So if that really does make you pee a lot, maybe you should be more careful with that. Again, that's where it's individual. So right. if that really is too much for you, too much caffeine, then cut back on that. And then with uh, diet sodas, I would say the big concern, of course, would be the artificial sweeteners that are in there. And those can do other harmful things to our body. And they're not great for our teeth because they're acidic. So I would say still try to get in as much water as you can. Right. And if you need something besides water, tea is probably your next best bet okay because there's not as much caffeine you can do herbal teas too and get different flavors in there right and they do have decaf black teas yes they do that people like me who don't like herbal Mm -hmm. tea so let's talk about some tips for getting in enough water each day that you know obviously eat some fruits and vegetables you know you can have some coffee and tea but what about beyond that how do we remind ourselves to drink water Yeah, this can be a hard thing for a lot of people. You know, what I usually recommend you start with is start with a small glass of water. I'm talking even like six ounces if that's where you need to start. And just try to drink that before a meal or during the meal. You know, because if you're eating regularly each day, you're already doing that. So just try to pair up the water along with that meal. And then if you can think to even drink a little bit of water between the meals, that might help. For me, what really helped was getting a water bottle like a good size one and I'd recommend preferably like a glass or a stainless steel one but get a good size water bottle and fill that up and if you know how much is in there every time you refill it it's kind of an easy way to keep track of how much you've drank right okay right if it's 24 ounces and it's gone hey you know you drank three cups of water already (laughs) that's true you know that day so yeah those are kind of my big tips you'd be surprised that you know once you start carrying a water bottle around with you like I keep it on my desk so it's kind of a visual cue to drink more water I have it in the car next to me sometimes I put it right between my legs and I sip it between (laughs) like you know stoplights and stuff yeah and then I end up like I forget it's there I just automatically grab it and I'm walking into a grocery store or restaurant I'm that lady and I'm like oh I did it again I need to go back to my car and put it back I I think there's also some like water drinking apps yes too out there There so if you're somebody like me who I don't know I don't trust myself to carry like a bottle of water around and not okay. forget it. Oh. I need like a tap on the shoulder to be like, hey, you haven't drank something okay. in a little while. So something like that. Or if you have like a, you know, an Apple Watch or whatever, yeah. I think they, those kinds of things, they can monitor it for you. Right. If you're like me and you like to be a little more passive. Okay. Okay. But but what, I but I do find that the more often you drink water, the more you're gonna start to crave it even too. And okay. you're gonna st- again I'll water trust does. You on that. Yeah, I mean water. I always have to tell people too. Water doesn't have a taste really to it. I mean sometimes I know you can, a lot of people will argue. I that. know they will argue with that, but I'm like it's not supposed to taste like anything. Right. <laughs> There's it's nothing supposed in to be it. Refreshing and clean. Right. Tasting. It's not if you've been a soda drinker, it's not gonna taste just like your soda did. <laughs> which there's a reason for that (laughs) yes you know what I mean so but you will start to like I think I don't know just the refreshingness of it after a while so Mm -hmm. it's interesting that you did mention soda because water obviously there's you know the water you can get out of the tap but Mm -hmm. what about bottled water spring water there's mineral water there's seltzer water there's sparkling water Mm -hmm. you know do these count yeah they all count towards your water intake Now, keep in mind, most bottled waters, I don't think everybody realizes this, but that's really just water taken from rivers, and they filter it and stick it in the plastic bottles. Or they take it, like, from a municipal water source and filter it. Yeah. It's really kind of like drinking tap water. Yeah. It's just convenient to carry around with you. I get it. And if you have your water bottle that you bought, you don't need that 
That's right. There you go. There you go. Now, spring water does taste really good, mm-hmm. right? And you will get small amounts of minerals like calcium and magnesium and sodium in there, but they are generally more expensive, so you probably don't want to be drinking lots of those day right. after day, right? Um, I would say if you need to limit sodium, keep in mind that some mineral waters can have higher amounts of sodium, especially the mineral waters from Europe. I was looking really? that up. Yeah, some had over like a 1,000 milligrams <gasps> per bottle. So... And it it's all depends on where the water comes from, right? Sure. So that varies. So just to be careful with that. But seltzer waters, sparkling waters, most of those are fine. But double check your ingredient list, yeah. I would say, on the bottles. Because sometimes they sneak in sugar in there in some I've form. I've had that happen. Mm-hmm. Comple- I would like to say completely unawares because I did not want sugar. <laughs> so this was one, you know, a rare occasion where I didn't want something sweet, you know. Yeah. But... I was very surprised. I won't say the brand, but it was. Okay. I was disappointed that it wasn't a more refreshing taste. All right. So we've talked about, you know, these different kinds of waters and how to make your water taste a little bit better. One of the things that we've noticed that's trendy, actually, Mm -hmm. hey, we're cool. And we've, (laughs) you know, given away these samples at the center when we were um, back before COVID. Yeah. um, Is infused water. Oh, and yeah. just we had our open house this past winter where mm-hmm. we did the Hawaiian theme and we did a pineapple mint infusion. Yeah. And it was like, who need? I mean, like, who needs juice? Right. It was so good. And anything that we've done with berries, mm-hmm. too. Yeah. It, it seems like, are we getting, you know, sugar in with that? Oh, hardly any sugar. So okay. don't worry about that. I mean, it's not, you're usually not eating the fruits or the right. vegetables that are in they there. They get kind of. They get mushy after a while, but yeah. you are getting like their essence, basically. Yeah. You're getting a, the flavoring from it, but it's it's hardly any carbs or added sugar. There's, I mean, it's natural sugars, of course, but you're not getting much sugar in there. And it's a really great way to get in enough water if you're one of those people that just doesn't like the taste of regular water or if you just want to change things up now and then sometimes if I have a little leftover like cut up lemon or lime if I'm cooking in the kitchen I'll add that to my water yeah you know that I'm drinking from at home so well and they do make those nice like pitchers and infusion bottles if you want to get really fancy I mean you don't even need to get fancy all you need is a regular pitcher you put in the fruit or the vegetable (laughs) or if you have an herb like mint or basil is usually really good in there right and then you put ice on top of that and put some water in there and just just let let it sit sit. overnight that's really and then you stir it the next day and that's it and then you can feel fancy yes the next day feel like you're at a spa well you know who knew that there was all of this to know about water i know you know it's just it's the basic element and yet there's all of these important things that it does for our bodies that's right so i hope all of you out there learned a lot about water today i hope you're not too grossed out about how to know if you're getting enough water each day <laughs> hope you got some good tips if you haven't been drinking as much water to help you with doing that so thank you so much for listening in today everybody and as we always say be the ruler of your own heart Bye-bye. bye Thank you for joining us on the Queen of Hearts podcast. Our podcast is recorded here at the Karen Yance Women's Cardiac Awareness Center inside Aurora St. Luke's Medical Center in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. For more heart-healthy tips, info, recipes, and more, visit our website at www.karenyancecenter.org, like us on Facebook at Karen Yance Center, and follow us on Pinterest. If you like what you hear, subscribe to our show and be sure to tell your friends. Until next time, ladies, be ruler of your own heart.